Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be talking about a bunch of high-quality, protein-rich items that you can store in your pantry. Whether you're a vegetarian, an omnivore, or a metasaurus, there's going to be a lot of options that we're going to talk about that might be of interest to you. First off, the reason I'm doing this video right now is at the time of this recording, uh, we are getting to what I hope is kind of the be end of the beginning of the whole COVID situation here on planet Earth. Uh, here in the United States, we're right in the middle of the Omicron spike, and I've just kind of decided to stop going to the grocery store. Uh, you know, we've been going to the grocery store using PPE and everything for the entire, you know, uh, COVID experience, uh, and we've done really, really awesome. We never caught COVID, we never caught any colds or flus or anything like that. We've been completely illness free the entire several years that COVID's been going on. I'm really proud of that and I'd like to just kind of do a clean sweep with the rest of the season and you know not catch COVID. It would feel really great to not get sick. So we've decided to kind of hold back. Now I was mentioning this plan to a friend of mine and uh, you know she's been interested in kind of improving her pantry and she was saying one of the challenges for her is always protein related items. You know it's easy to get like you know flour and crackers and you know pasta sauce that kind of stuff but she was wondering what we do for protein. We here at our house are mostly vegetarian. You know we, we, we do have some kind of meat items that we occasionally put in, uh, which is actually the dictionary definition of vegetarianism, that you eat mostly, you get most of your food from uh, from plant uh, as opposed to getting it from animals. So, you know, we're vegetarian here, mostly plants, you know, occasionally throw some animals in there. But uh, I've got a, a pretty good mix of different things that we use, and I wanted to share them with you guys if you guys kind of have the same kind of thing about like, well, you know, what do you do for protein? First off, I'm going to start with kind of vegetarian stuff because that applies to everyone, and then we're going to kind of fold into some of the other things. First off, I want to... Uh, just to give you the tone of the video. You know, not every protein uh, has to necessarily be healthy, and some of them can be fun, and it's good to have fun stuff in your pantry too. Gummy bears. <laughs> Gummy bears are, you know, it's a treat, you know, especially if you have kids in your house, although, to be honest, you know, I might be guilty of eating these occasionally. Uh, but gummy bears, uh, they have, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, not a ton of protein in them, but they do have some protein. Each serving has one gram of protein of these guys. So that's kind of a fun way. And I introduce this first because oftentimes protein will uh, appear in things that you wouldn't necessarily uh, think about. So it's worthwhile kind of going through you know, some of the things that you may already keep in your pantry. You might be like, oh, wow, I actually did not realize there was that much protein in, the, in this particular thing. So it's worth kind of checking out different things and seeing where protein might be hiding that you aren't necessarily thinking about it. Uh, one uh, great way of storing protein that's probably pretty obvious to most people is nuts. These are some uh, pistachio nuts. Pistachio nuts seem to have a pretty long shelf life. I've uh, kept them for a couple of years. Once you open a bag of pistachio nuts, they seem like they, you know, they start getting a little bit rubbery and you know not not quite so fresh uh in terms of going rancid they don't seem like it, it seems like it takes a while for them to actually you know begin going rancid uh, overall i think pistachio nuts at least salted ones tend to have a pretty good shelf life in a pantry um the salt acts as a preservative and uh, you know in something like this this is a mix of sesame sticks and nuts and pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds all sorts of th things like that and you know per serving of this it is six grams of protein in every serving so something like this uh it's, it's kind of like a nice fun snack. Obviously there's a lot of uh, salt in this so you don't want to like have this be your primary so source of protein uh, because you know there's a lot of salt in there. But it's a way of kind of spicing things up literally and figuratively uh, and also getting your protein in. And I, I think things like this are really important. A lot of times when people are talking about like stocking up their pantry they're just like get, get rice, get beans. <laughs> that's kind of where it ends then start buying bullets uh, I think it's important to have uh, you know a lot of stuff that actually makes food uh, taste good so that like if you needed to live off your pantry for like I don't know two months three months you wouldn't be vomiting the food up at the end because it's like you're so tired of just having uh, it's another bowl of tasteless rice and beans it's important to have kind of those seasoning salts peppers curries and things like that and you know having you know fun little uh, spices uh, spiced up kind of things as well uh, one type of nut that I have found does not store very well is peanuts and I think peanuts are not actually technically even a nut but I bought peanuts in the past here's a the last thing of peanuts that I bought it was a big bulk bulk thing of peanuts, and it's reminding you that there's a, a peanut allergen in this box of only peanuts. Um, I have never had very good success with peanuts. In fact, that entire box I think is just going to be squirrel food. That is, That was the last time I was going to exper experiment with peanuts. Um, they don't last very long, at least in terms of like preppers that love for things to last for, you know, a couple of years or several years. Peanuts do not have a very good track record with me. I've tried storing them under various conditions. They seem like they do better if they're in a shell and they do better if they have been salted in the shell. Uh, but 
you know, compared to other things that uh, are similar to them nutritionally, peanuts, I'm not a big fan of them. And I'm, I've kind of uh, started to phase them out of my pantry. I'm just not really buying peanuts anymore as a prep. That said, there is one way that you can get peanuts if you do like them, and they do store pretty well, and that's in the form of sealed jars of peanut butter. Uh, these, uh, these kind of jars, they seem to last you know, several years past expiration. I, I feel pretty good about these kind of things, but in terms of just peanuts straight, not really the best kind of nut if you want to store stuff. Um, one other nut that is really good is cashews. Uh, cashew nuts, at least salted ones, seem to last many, many years. Uh, yeah, I've never had a batch of cashews go bad. So pistachios, pretty good. Cashews, pretty good. Nut mixes with salt seem to be pretty good. Uh, another thing uh, is that you can get are things like uh, granola bars. Uh, many types of granola bars uh, have a lot of protein in them. Uh, for each of these bars, they have 11 grams of protein in, in uh, every one of these bars. So, you know, this isn't like, you know, a piece of venison or whatever, but it's, you know, there's a fair bit of protein in it. So this is another way that you get, but uh, your, your protein, obviously there's a lot of sugar in there, but in an emergency situation, sugar is your friend, that's calories, you need those. Um, and, you know, fair bit of salt in it as well, but you know, it's nice to kind of spice things up and, uh, you know, not have everything just be bland beans and rice. Uh, some other things that are good for uh, protein are things like, uh, like simmer sauces. This is full of chickpeas in here. Uh, this is an Indian simmer sauce and again this is another one of those kind of things where it has flavor in with it so it just makes your meals more fun. Uh, you can also just buy chickpeas in bulk and I do that. I have giant bins of chickpeas that I use. I have giant bins of pinto beans and black beans and uh, legumes, well, no, not legumes, lentils, which are a type of legume. These are all types of legumes. Uh, and I get all of those things and you know, oftentimes they'll get delivered in a big bag, something like this, and then I will put them into a storage bin with a, a desiccant in there to make sure that they stay dry. And, uh, you know, those things are really great. With the, the, the pinto beans, you can kind of make, uh, you know, chilies with them. Uh, you can just season them with um, bullion cubes and like salt, pepper, oregano, something like that. And, you know, you can make a nice bean dish. So, uh, you know, beans are really great, but I think it's nice to kind of have things that are oftentimes pre-seasoned just so you can get a little variety if, in, you know, if you're not the best cook either. This is uh, baked beans and there are vegetarian baked beans, which is what these are. There are baked beans that are not vegetarian. That's another uh, you know way that you can get kind of some of those legumes with the protein into your diet and, pro and uh, legumes do have a fair bit of uh, protein in them this one here uh, also has 11 grams of protein uh, you know just like those um, uh, uh, Cliff Energy Bars that I was uh, referring to either. So beans, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people that are into the meat eating side of uh, protein acquisition uh, tend to poo poo a lot of the things that aren't meat. But uh, I mean, that's just that's the reality of the world. There's a lot of different ways of getting protein. I know that people who um, primarily eat meat and then they try to have a bunch of beans, they get gastrointestinal distress and like, oh, what are these crazy vegetarians doing? It's not, the, the problem isn't that you ate beans, the problem is that you don't usually eat beans and then you jumped into them. Vegetarians uh, will oftentimes get the same problem if they eat like, you know, a, a steak. You know, if you haven't been eating steak for a while, you're uh, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The biology, the um, micro microbiome of your intestines, uh, you know, kind of, evolves to match what you've been eating. So if you change your diet uh, dramatically all of a sudden, that's giving you gastrointestinal distress. So a vegetarian diet is is not what's making you all like gassy or whatever if you jump to it. A meat eating diet is not what's making you all gassy when you jump into it. It's the fact that you're changing from one to the other. So it's nice to have whatever your emergency food plan to be, whatever that is, it should be kind of like what you're doing on a normal basis anyway, because if you go from one thing and jump into another, you're gonna get that gastrointestinal kind of distress. You know, it'll work itself out, um, and it'll take, you know, kind of a, a matter of time when you'll get the right uh, kind of uh, intestinal ecology, and then you'll have the right, you know, little critters in there to break things down and everything. But if you're in the middle of an emergency situation, why do you wanna add a bunch of farts on top of that? So, you know, it's nice to kind of have whatever your emergency plan is, sort of have that be what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is the kind of pantry that I like maintaining where I'm constantly eating out of my pantry, constantly refreshing it. I am a total non-fan of the idea of just getting like, like a bucket of food that's, you know, it's freeze dried in there and there's all oxygen absorbers and that's gonna last 30 or 40 years. Yeah, okay, that works. And if I didn't have any other food, I'd be very happy to have that. But I'd be even more happy to have the kind of food that I'm used to eating anyway. And I'm regularly, regularly cycling through it. And, uh, you know, that way, when there's an emergency, I don't have to change everything around. And my 
stomach ecology is going to thank me for it. And everyone around me will too, because they don't have to like smell the results of that. Uh, other things. Uh, this is, uh, you know, pretty simple. This is just a protein pow uh, powder. This is 21 grams of protein per serving. So quite a bit of protein in here. Uh, this is a vegetarian one. There's also non-vegetarian ones. Um, uh, I grabbed a bunch of these uh, actually at the beginning of COVID. I was never really into protein powders before, but when it became obvious that, uh, you know, there was going to be a situation where I might not want to or be able to go to the grocery store for a while, I stocked up on a lot of these and they've been a really nice kind of backbone. I, I use these kind of things almost in the same way that you might use a supplement, like a multi, uh, like a multivitamin or something like that. I like to eat a healthy diet and that's always my goal for every day, but I also take a multivitamin. So if there are any holes in my diet, it kind of fills, fills those sorts of things in. And I did this in kind of the same way where like, I mean, you know, I'm trying to get different proteins from different sources throughout the day, but if I have any holes, this thing is going to kind of fill those things in. And, and I appreciate the idea of having variety in, in lots of different things. All right, some other uh, uh, protein sources. And this one is kind of a neat one. Uh, one issue with uh, not going to the grocery store uh, or, you know, if it's not summertime, you not be able to plant a garden uh, is the idea of getting, you know, fresh greens into your diet. And uh, this is, these are sprouting seeds. This is all, all alfalfa seeds. I have a, a seed sprouting kit that I he use here at my house. And this is both a good way of getting protein. And on top of that, it's also a good way of getting some fresh greens in your diet. So it could be the middle of the winter. You can throw some sprouting greens in, and this is going to give you protein and fresh greens. Uh, it's a really great way of adding something to your, your diet that really, you, you know, there's no other way of really getting that other than going to the grocery store. If you're in the middle of winter, you know, you don't have that garden outside. If you're into wild edibles, it doesn't even matter because all the wild edibles are under snow uh, in the middle of the winter. So this is a, like a really important way of getting both fresh greens and protein into your diet. Sprouting greens right here. By the way, uh, pretty much all the things I'm going to be talking about in this video, I'm going to be putting links to down in the description below. I've tried to... Uh, get more into sourcing a lot of my stuff from online for delivery. Uh, that's been very convenient for me. I still do grocery store runs, uh, but you know, kind of having the deliveries on top of that, it makes it so that I don't have to go to the grocery store quite as often. And I've really enjoyed the idea of being able to get, you know, the big bags you can't necessarily get from the, uh, from the grocery store. Um, so now we're going to get into some things that are not necessarily, uh, vegetarian friendly. Uh, one of them is, uh, uh, wild sardines. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of sardines. I've always had the kind of the same sense of most people with sardines. Like sardines are for like people who like eating gross things. Uh, but this particular brand right here, I'll give you a close-up view of that. Wild Planet sardines. These are just in olive oil here. These are awfully good. Uh, they're pretty close to tuna fish. And I know by saying that someone's going to taste these and be like, huh, that wasn't tuna fish. Okay. It is not literally the exact same thing as eating tuna fish, but there's much less sardininess to these guys. And it, it like, you know, it kind of reminds me of tuna fish. I've gotten off tuna fish since tuna fish is like 25% mercury these days. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is kind of like the closest thing I get to it. But this particular brand of these sardines are really good. And they also, sardines have a lot of other really uh, helpful benefits like the omega fatty acids and... That's the one I really am excited about is the mega fatty, fatty acids. But it's, it's part of a lot of scientifically demonstrated really healthy diets that have the, the tiny oily fishes in them. And they're also very sustainable, you know, because you're not catching these giant fish from the ocean. It's a very sustainable sort of uh, food source. Uh, another thing that is not vegetarian, uh, turkey. Now, I, I try to stay away from things that are... Um, you know, that need to be frozen. Uh, you know, I do have some meat in the freezer. In fact, I have salmon that I keep in the freezer and salmon is another one of those nice omega fatty acid, uh, omega fatted fatty acid sorts of fish. Um, but I like to have a lot of things that don't need uh, refrigeration or freezing just because like, what if something goes down? What if your freezer breaks or whatever? I like to have a lot of stuff that can just be shelf stable and things like this. Uh, these are just, um, little turkey jerky kind of things. Uh, this is uh, just another way of kind of uh, storing stuff like that on your shelf. So those are a whole bunch of different ways. I, one thing I didn't even mention was cheese, uh, because cheese kind of falls into that category. You want to, you know, have it refrigerated and you're going to kind of have to depend on it being refrigerated. Uh, but there, uh, that's not entirely true. Uh, you can do sh uh, shelf stable cheeses. It's just not something I've really gotten into. You know, when you see like the big wheel with the wax and everything like that, Some, someday I'm going to experiment with that, but you know, I don't want to shut my mouth off about it now because it's not something I have a lot of experience with. But I do know that uh, a lot of uh, sharp cheddars can stay in the refrigerator for 
a long, long time. Uh, they've got a really long shelf life as long as that shelf is in a refrigerator. And you can even freeze a lot of those things. Uh, and, uh, you know, they act, they, if you buy like big bricks of cheddar cheese, they, you know, once you pull them out of the freezer, you know, the texture is not quite the same, but it's not bad or anything. It's just different. Uh, and they can act like if you have like a big chest freezer, they can act kind of like a nice thermal mass in there where you can just get a lot of them in there. They stack ne uh, next to each other really easily. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a decent way of kind of, you know, getting just a lot of stuff into your freezer and, you know, creating that nice thermal mass. One other thing that I do put in my freezer that it, that is um, uh, protein related is hummus. Uh, you know, hummus usually comes in tubs and, you know, round kind of uh, cylindrical tubs. And it's oftentimes not the best way of kind of tessellating things into a freezer, but that is something if you like hummus, that's another good source of protein and you can freeze that stuff. And once you thaw it out, I think the texture is just fine on that. So there are lots and lots of different options. And what I would recommend to you is take whatever things you like and figure out, you know, whether those things are going to work and experiment because that is kind of the way that I figured out you know, what worked for me because there are so many different foods in the world and so many of them you can't even get at grocery stores. We all have our own unique diets. And the best way to figure out whether the stuff that you would want to have in an emergency will store into an emergency is experiment with it now and see. Maybe you don't want to go in and buy like that many peanuts <laughs> as an experiment. You know, I guess the, the squirrels will benefit off of that, but I'll never, I'll never see the benefits of that uh, other than the knowledge that I gained by learning that that didn't work. But take whatever your diet is, see what works, you know, try things out in small quantities and then, you know, when bumps do come down the road and they always come down the road, you will already have had the experience and you've already gone through a lot of the trial and error yourself. But as you can see, there are a lot of different options for protein in your pantry. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.